What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker here on Unique Access. And today for Best Albums, we have the honor and the privilege of being joined by Sir Jinx. Yes. Thank you for coming through, sir. Oh, man, you know I'm always here, man. Yes. Like we, your shadow, man. We appreciate that, Jinx. Oh, and uh, man. Jinx has selected for his Best Album today, Main Sources, Breaking Albums. Now, right. Jinx, this album came out in 1991. Right. There's so much going on in rap that year. You've, at this point, produced a lot of stuff. You work with the Bomb Squad. You know, you've done stuff with Cube. You've been to New York. You've you've right. you've been doing stuff. Yo right. Yo, Coogee cool Rap, right, etc. Coogee cool Rap hadn't come out yet, no, but you'd already been yet. you'd already been working with him. I've, I've been I've been seasoned. I was seasoned a little bit. <laughs> so, that being said, prior to hearing uh, Breaking Adams. What did you know about Main Source or Large Professor? Anything or a lot? Um, I think I, I got to looking at the front door. I think okay. I, looking at the front door back when the box was on, gotcha. and um, that that was the thing that, that drew me to his voice. Like okay. he had a real commanding voice, and then uh, of course the line, you, you know, you treat me like a burnt piece of bacon. Like I, <laughs> I, I, I just I I love that 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 line right there and then then the whole looking at the front door was just like a part of my life at, at some point like mm -hmm. i had a girlfriend and she was trying to be high sedity and uh you know i'm saying you know when we argue you know uh just the same stuff <clears throat> right well speaking on that record in particular the thing i always thought was interesting about it was it was a very different way to approach a not pleasant relationship. Right. Like, and even the idea of looking at the front door, like, what is that? Right, like, right. Because I, I remember I had seen the title, of course, before I heard the song, and I was just like, man, what in the world is this going to be about? And well, I, it means you're leaving. Well, no, but I'm saying before <laughs> I heard the song, I was like, what is this? Looking at the front door, what and, is this? Yeah, and, and that's the uh, the track. Uh, didn't, um, um, T.I. did that same. A bunch of people did. Yeah. Um, Tri Car Quest did the tra same track over. Mm -hmm. Do, do, do. Ain't that a world tour? Same beat? Do, do, do. Yeah. Same do, beat. Do, do. Yeah. <laughs> the under part. <laughs> right, right, yeah, right, yeah. right, 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 right. Yeah. But um, for you as a as someone that works with a lot of great writers and, and knows how to write himself and all this other stuff, what did you find was interesting about how large professor – address the relationship like that the, the way i like the uh, when i when i first got into law professor i just like his wordplay like mm. he, had, he had good wordplay he got to the point and he was kind of tough a little bit like the way mm. he was talking was like a little tough but not a gangster like but he just talked like he can rap good i kind of look at i was thinking in the car when i was playing it it's like he gave birth to like a lot of people like to the sauce monies and the mm. royce five nines and and those kind of people and this is the reason why i like royce fine nine because he probably reminds me mm. of large professor and and then he was a producer as well so i thought that was dope yeah like i think it is awesome when the artists can produce themselves right and then they're such a good rapper at the same time right it really uh takes it to a, another level so with the breaking atoms you know once we get the album that was also something that kind of struck me because it was in 91 rap was very different but i remember the cover was more colorful than i was used right. to and it like had a weird picture right and what are these dudes looking at Right. I did, I, what did you think of the cover? I looked at the cover because, you know, it was like he was doing molecules. He was <laughs> breaking you know, atoms. Like he was, they were making it, you know, back in the day, uh, you had to have, what, what was it called? A person that, that makes your your visuals for you, you know, like, oh, like art direction. Yeah. Your art director right. had to see like, Oh, I know what they want. You know, it's a whole bunch of albums that I, album covers. I saw like, Ooh, where were they going with this one? <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, but, uh, I just like that they were different, you know? And I, like I always say, I liked the diversity in rap at that time. You know, people wasn't scared to, to, to do something like that rather than trying to be, you know, tough on the album cover or, you know, holding a girl's ass cheek or some shit, you know, like right. breaking her atom, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. But, uh, 
Yeah, it was dope, man. I liked it. I, I, I was a nerd, man. So that was kind of like my world a little bit, like Tri Call Quest and okay. and um, Brand Nubians. That was that. That's what what was in at that time. Okay. And then one of the songs that got popular that looked at police brutality in a different way was the friendly game of baseball. Right. So of course we had had fuck the police and mm -hmm. W.A. And we also had had one time gaffing them up Compton's most wanted, mm -hmm. but that was kind of looked at like a West coast thing. Right. So then I was like, Oh man, these dudes did a song about police brutality. But too. Once again, it's the wordplay. So break it down. <laughs> what made friendly game of baseball like noteworthy to you? Well, the the well the first thing was the sample because you know we was all dipping into the same beats and break samples at the time and it was like who who's going to use it the best you know who's going to do it the right. best so you know when he uh when he talks about you know the 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 similarities of of of, of police brutality on top of baseball it was just so dope to me and I I I, I, I you know I play it to this day that was, it was a dope album yeah you know what I mean? and then um. Live at the Barbecue, of course, is another great right. song because 91 was getting into where, you know, of course, the symphony was probably the first major one of the posse cut. Right. But then this was another one that, that carried on that tradition and, of course, introduced most people to Nasty Nas at the time. Right. Who then became Nas. But for you, what what did you take away from Live at the Barbecue? I just like the diversity of the rappers that was on it. Cause you know, Akinelli was on it at, right. at that time. And, um, um, of course, you know, uh, large Fest was on it and it just sound like they were just having fun, you know, like back in the day where you can have ad libs in the background of the song, you know, like at the end of the track, when I be listening to the end of it, I'll be trying to hear that conversation in the back. Like that sound like some queen shit right there. Like them niggas is really on a stoop somewhere in Queens or something. <laughs> and it, it just make it's kind of visual to make me kind of believe that they had a bombers on and the forty belows or the thirty belows, I don't know what they call. Those big ass <laughs> Timberlands. Right. <laughs> thirty belows, I think that's what they call. But um, it it just brings me a visual sight of of where where he was coming from with the with the album, mm -hmm. and the beats was dope, man, and they sound good. Yeah, and this was also the time, ninety one, where we still had a lot of scratching and cutting on the album, right. and then Main Source had two GJs, Sir Scratch and K Cut, right, and they had the Scratch and Cut song on there. So I thought it was like Alamo or something. <laughs> so who, who was Alamo with? Brand Nubian. Oh, cheers. So for um, for you as someone that DJs and was at the time also, what in 91, this was somewhat normal to still have albums with DJ and, and scratching well, on that, them? That, to have scratching in your record back in the day, that made you hip hop. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So there's a difference between <clears throat> rapping and hip hop. Rapping was like, mainstream but hip-hop is keeping the elements all involved and then and, and the way the beats were made and having little scratch and stuff in and just keeping the elements all together i guess the elements here we go again <laughs> I, I didn't mean to do that right. <laughs> no problem <laughs> it just no problem. happened to happen yes yes but uh yeah but and then I can t I can smell the uh, SB twelve hundred. I can smell the production mm -hmm. on on where he was coming from, and um and it's a, and then one of them, uh, the what can I do that that was one that I I used on um on yo yo oh, on yo yo on thing. And then uh, the dope thing is uh, that was the thing that one of my homeboys, Def Jeff. Uh, came and told me like he got that from me for the oh, boss. For the boss, right? Deeper, right, 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 right deeper right. and deeper. So we was all doing the same thing. So to hear it being done that way, I was like, that's dope. Okay, and then one of the other things that's great about the Breaking the Adams album is that it has so many different sounds. And Large right. Professor being a great producer, the Just Hanging Out was also a big record, right. and that of course has the reggae sample in there and the vibe yeah. of it. So for you, what did that record bring to Breaking Adams, just hanging out? I just like listening to dope music, and I give people props when props do. I'm not always stuck on myself most of the time, but not all the time. <laughs> not all the time? Nah, because I'm very competitive. So when I hear a good fighter and I'm like, oh, 
And then when I met the guy, he was just mad cool, dealing with G-Rap and stuff, and <clears throat> talked to him up a few times. And he was just a down-to-earth kind of person, kind of like I said about when I go to New York and deal with different guys, we all searching the same records. We all doing the same thing. I thought New York dudes had a bigger selection of music just on how music happens in New York because L.A. is so flat. Mm. To where when a dude, when a person loses their, you know, apartment or whatever, the music just comes down to the floor. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you can just get it from outside. So I just felt like they had crazy selections. And in L.A., when you want to look for music, you have to drive and go to record stores all over because you can't go through people trash on a, you know, a, well, you know, a regular street. Like right. people with lawns and grass and stuff like that. So I thought the selections was crazy that he would use. And uh, what's the other one? Well, all of them, man. I, I rock all of well, them. Well, peace is not the word to play is another good one because that was a good, um, that had a good kind of, everybody was using that word at the time a lot, right. especially on the East Coast where they're from. But he made a point to sh say like hey man like don't just be throwing that word around right right you know? right that's an important thing right so what is it like listening to rappers from other cities when they use their slang and main source did that cleverly throughout uh all of breaking adams that's just the, the diversity it's like a this day codes just like la have we got our own codes on, on what we talk about I mean, you just learn learn they street game, they street they street jargon, you know, whatever they they go through. So, because a lot of words that they use over there mean different, something different over here, you know. Right. <laughs> right. I, I remember um, I was dealing with uh, Eric Sattler, and Eric Sattler was like, you know, and when Cube was like, well, you know, we belling, and he was like, what the hell is belling? Like, cause he thought it meant socking somebody. Okay. And he was like, nah, that means we're bailing, leaving. We're out. <laughs> right, right. But when New York cats use different type of lingo, sometimes it might be different. So, well, you know, it's like little codes that they use and the, and the way they speak. That it's all hip hop. You know, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, they teach us some downtown. I mean, not down south people. They got their own lingo. They, you know, they the way they talk is even um, a lot different. So. I just like listening to stuff that has this diversity. Back in these days, I had to listen to stuff. When I'm on my way to the studio, I needed that same kind of energy, you know. So this one, this record was one of the records that I, I definitely uh, was bumping. And I, I gave it some real burn. I had it on cassette. Well, speaking <laughs> on cassette, back in that era, you couldn't really get around songs very well. And the album starts off very strong with Snake Eyes. Right. Uh, because that... that Beat wise, in particular, that's one of my favorite, if not my favorite, beat on there. Mm -hmm. So, what do you remember about the production and the sounds on Snake Eyes? I mean, it just sound like like ghetto. Like it sound like like the Queens. I know they, I think they're from Queens mm -hmm. or whatever. And it, it just it just remind me of how them times was. Well, to now, it, it now it do. But I was always hip to uh, Large Professor, so. When, when I start when I got the album, because I think Looking at the Front Door was a single at first, and yep. then they dropped the album, and then uh, it was just worth listening to. So a lot of them, I don't really know the titles of them, because I just was banging them just back to back, and it's <laughs> like one of them albums you can play all the way through. At least I think you can. There was a few albums that was out at that time, but uh, yeah, Breaking Adams, I was definitely banging that one. So now, looking back at the legacy of Main Source's Breaking Adams, mm -hmm. why do you think and why do you select it as one of the best albums of all time? Uh, the quality of it. Cause just because a song sells don't mean it's dope. You right. know, to me, there's a lot of dope songs that didn't make it, you know. But it, it just, I think it plays a little bit of me. Like I said, with the, uh, looking at the front door, that I definitely like that one. And then the friendly game of baseball. And then, the, the uh, you know, the was it the backyard? The backyard live at the barbecue. Live, live at the barbecue. Yeah. Those, those are the ones that did it. But a few of them, if I start playing, and then um, the doom, mm, doom, mm, that one, that's the one just hanging out. Yep. Right. So at the different times, they did different stuff to me. So that some albums don't do that. Some albums I listen to, and I just listen to it for that one song. But if I feel a different way, I can listen to this album and listen to another song. 
And as right. a as a supreme producer yourself, what do you what did Large Professor do on the album that to you is very noteworthy? Well, the breaks, the way he did his breaks, uh, the 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 it was, and then um, a few of the songs he just said the name of the song, you know, right. rather than having a real extravagant hook or you know, a, a live string line or people started adding other stuff to music just to make it sound like a certain kind of way. And he just kind of kept kept it grunge, kept it grimy. That's what I like, grimy shit. That's that's what I'm into. Well, there it is, y'all. Yeah, yeah. Sir Jinx here on Best Albums with Main Source, Breaking Atoms. Yeah. Appreciate it, Jinx. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers. In the beginning, hip-hop was ruled by the East Coast. Then the West Coast rose to prominence, thanks to gangster rap. Hip-hop changed the world. Gangster rap changed the narrative. And then changed the world again. The history of gangster rap features unheard stories, unseen photos and documents, all with exclusive interviews from the founders and players who shaped gangster rap. I think a real gangster rapper has to scare you a little bit. The history of gangster rap written by veteran rap journalist Soren Baker. In stores now. Yo, what up? This is DJ Quick. Be sure to pick up my homeboy Soren Baker's book, The History of Gangster Rap, if you really want to know what we do.